in the upper right, folks, in the blue. He has Precise Storm Gaming, Juanito. Spam those Doritos. It's special. His opponent in the bottom left in the red. The best pro gamer name ever, Max Angel. He's a strand. And I've heard people say, you know, how how do you have a name like Max Angel and not incorporate that in some way into your gamer tag? Well, if you think about it, Astrea kind of means starry-ish. You know, it's um, it sounds like at the very least it comes from the you know, Astra stars. And angels are stars are heavenly things. Angels are heavenly. It works out. That's my argument. At least I'm sticking to it. Don't know how accurate it is. But we do have a proxy barracks on the map from special here in this game. Number one is he wants to put a little pressure on Astrea to start. Now, remember... This is on the Korean server, both Special and Astrea. Live there now. Uh, special permanently, actually, as I believe. I heard rumors he got married. Don't know how accurate that is. But regardless, he is back in Korea. As I did... Oh, Astrea didn't see it. Unfortunate. Now, of course, the probe will show up in the natural and realize there's nothing there and show up in the main base because I don't think there's a full wall and also realize that there is nothing there. So Astrea will know what's up. But he will miss out on the opportunity to chrono a zealot or to, to build a zealot immediately and really take no damage. Instead, he's going to have to rely on good probe pulls and, and maybe other fun things to make sure that uh, this Reaper does not get all that much down. But we can see already he is trying to track down the SCV on the other side. They're just trying to build that bunker, but the bunker is getting started. And the R... <laughs> Oh, we've all been there. Uh, you see, Estrella, he kind of takes his hands off the keyboard for a second. Looks very disappointed because the SCV RNG was fantastic. Special was able to get it in that mineral patch, and now as the Reaper arrives, well, it looks like this bunker should complete. But their stalker's out very soon. Big deal, though, is... Oh, 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 probe. Not quite. Playing ring around the rosy here. But actually, no, this bunker should not complete. Well done from Estrella. He's able to wait long enough. Now the bunker is salvaged. They're really only trading one probe for the bunker cancel for killing an SCV and for this being a proxy Reaper, which again, has not gotten much done. Well, Australia's going to be pretty happy at the start of this game. Of course, no guarantee that he continues with that positive outlook on life, but for right now, he's enjoying things. Ah, nice. Oh, nice stalker movement right there. He loses another probe, but gets the twilight down. And notice what he did with the stalkers. He put it to the, uh, the downhill side of the KDE charge, and that meant that the Reaper said to stay in the base because the stalker would be bounced out a little bit further away from where the natural was and if that's where the Reapers wanted to run to so by putting the stalker in that position the Reaper said to stay there would meant that one Reaper just died when maybe if he had not done that little bit of a micro move well uh, maybe both Re maybe, maybe no Reapers die maybe one Reaper maybe both Reapers get out of course small thing not totally sure but the first Reaper returns back home and or the surviving Reaper, I guess, returns home, knocks down the probe that has just been circling the main base of Estrella right now. Or of uh, Special right now, just getting as much information, really getting as much information as possible. Now, Blink is on the way, Robo on the way as well. And uh, the Robo is interesting because often if the Protoss player is just going for Robo play, they are going for Blink they will not get the robo the rebel will come later right yeah, because you don't need it you use stalkers to run across the map and certainly on a map like say waterfall which is so very short uh you maybe don't need the robo unless you're doing one of two things unless you're going really aggressive and say going four gate uh or just getting war prism off three gate or you're not doing anything or if you're sorry if you're going for two base colossus or really quick colossus, not even two base but really quick colossus play and knowing astrea i was gonna say i think it's the latter but no He's getting a war prism with this, but I, he only has two gateways. He's getting, you know, okay, so there's three gate blink. What's coming out from Astrea here in this game is that uh, another stalker will go down to the random Widow Mine, but at least it will trade its life for it. As, uh, two stalkers really do not kill Widow Mines all that quickly. Now, special. He does have one, 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 second and third barracks on the way. We're going to see Stim and Combat Shields getting started soon enough. Let's see whether Estrella can really uh, kneecap special before too much of anything happens. We're bringing in a couple more stalkers here. And well, the tanks seem to be in good position, but not good enough to position to prevent the stalkers from blinking in the main base. And in fact, we may see Estrella just elevator. No, he's going to blink in. Well, only one tank is teaching. So that's going to go down pretty quickly. Your nice micro from Estrella. And it uh, looks like he is losing. Okay, so he's losing a couple probes to the Raven. Or no, I'm sorry. I didn't realize there was a Banshee in the game. Uh, losing a couple probes to the Banshee, but the stalkers are kind of unstoppable here because so much was committed 
to, well, the aggression on the other side, the tech, the Banshee, and the Raven, which means that there is absolutely nothing really here. This means they keep blinking around, another tank pops out, but the Stalkers, they just keep running away. And the only unfortunate thing is the fact that Astrea can't really warp in right now because he's so desperately hiding with these Stalkers. But he does, of course, finally warp. And also, of course, he didn't really have warp ins at home because I imagine he warped the Stalkers in at some point. But, okay, there we go. There are the Stalkers. This Banshee should now go down. But still, this Banshee, I don't even know how many kills it has, but it had a lot. 14 kills, maybe, on that Banshee. 17, 17 probe kills. So Strayed does have to get, even as the damage he got against Special was fantastic, and it really did feel like he might, might snowball. The fact that he had to warp in at home, the fact that the Banshee still got 17 probes, where I guess it's technically 15 probe heals, something like that. Uh, despite that, the fact that he, he had to, well, but the fact that he did all this damage, the fact that that got so many worker kills, does put Astray in a bit of a difficult position. And it did buy time for another tank to pop out, and actually two tanks to pop out here. So now we just have a uh, special trying to zone Astray away as he blinks around, blinks on the left side, eating tank shots as he goes. A couple Zealots have warped in, and now the Stalkers, they need to find some way to do something here, but they're just trapped in the main base. But SCVs now, those are going to be uh, easy pickings here. It's four Stalkers to one shot, so with five, it just means you one shot a little bit harder. And these Stalkers, or these uh, SCVs will now start to fall down. Zealot in the front just to tank, and while this will not be game ending damage, Astray lost too much to the, uh, to the tanks. It is certainly excellent damage for Astrea in general. And now his third base is up. He's got three probes on the way at a time. Charge completing here. And remember, he's only on two gas. This is going to be a lot of charge lots. Not a lot of anything else. Not a lot of tech. Which, considering the damage that he's done, and damage the special has done to him, uh, considering the game state, it makes a lot of sense. Although, did special ever start stim? Stim's got to be done, right? Stim and combat shields. I don't see them. It's seven. Special on two bases. 740. And there is no Stim. In fact, Stim was just getting started. That is such an oversight from Special. Such a problem. From I, the Words cannot... Unless there's a third command center that I'm just missing and that very well might be the case. Uh, there is, this is just such a problem for Special right now. I'm glad that the game sounds that I don't get to... Yeah. There's no third base, especially going five racks all in, but his stim is only, his stim started at seven minutes. Folks, I don't want to say special's dead because I've seen Terran players come back from situations like this, but special's going to have no potential on, he's not going to be able to do anything until like nine minutes, 9.30 maybe. Meanwhile, Astrea has three bases, special doesn't. Uh, Estrella has this big army that will continue to get bigger. He's building more, building more gateways. He's got the Twilight Council down. He's got the Temple Archives down. Uh, he's going to be building Storm pretty soon, I assume. Well, yeah, he's up to five gas. He's absolutely yeah. There we go. Storm's on the way. Uh, normally, Storm is is a bit interesting because if you go for Storm in your charge charge opener, it means that the Terran really eclipses you in army supply. But that's not happening. Estrella is having his cake and eating it too. Stalkers here active on the map right now. And really, remember, any sort of damage that Astray gets is, is absolute gravy. It's keeping Terra, the Terran back. And Stim is done, by the way. Combat Shield's just about done as well. But uh, I... Especially going for a 5 racks 2 base all in. But it, this seems doomed to fail. Charge is done! There are not many... Really, we don't have any Widow Mines. We don't have any... Really, the important thing, of course, is Ghost. We don't have anything that deals with the High Templar. Or the Zealots, for that matter. I mean, technically tanks and just a lot of stuff. But... I remain unconvinced, folks. So there we go. Storm dropped down a lot of this bio. They're very, very low indeed. Stock feel very emboldened to move forward. Is where we have the warp prism behind this army. There's another. Actually, I didn't say warp prism, but the storms are very nice indeed. The SCVs were pulled here, but pulling SCVs against storm is not what you want to do if you all remember back in the days when scvs pulls were much more common uh the timing was really well scvs tend to work pulls tended to work against 
Colossus play, but not against Storm. And generally, the, the pull would happen, would hit, would try to hit right before Storm completes. And that tended to work very, very well. If you were able to make the timing happen, it was super slim margin. Well, Special just needs to find some... He, I, I'm, he needs to, I'm saying he needs to find some way back into this game, but folks, in all honesty, I don't really... I don't really see a path back into this game. Unfortunately, I would love to say I do, but uh, I'm rather pessimistic. So now the Zealots run forward. We do see the Raven get EM who gets fed back. So there's going to be no armor shredder missiles. Nothing like that to make this work out. And Astrea kind of bops special, to be totally honest. Here we go, folks. The upper right, he is down one in this defense of first place. In this pursuit of first place, he is special. Never left here on Stargazers in the red for Alpha X. Really dominant. Really dominant in that first game. He's Astrea. Especially again going for a proxy here in game number two, but Astrea is going to have an even quicker scout uh, compared to game number one because, well, the, the natural natural rush distance on this map is very, very short across the map. So. Probe finds the main base very, very quickly. We have to see what exactly he finds. Sees double gas, sees nothing there. It's like, okay, well, Proxy Reaper. Technically, it could be Proxy Marauder. But proxy Marauder is normally on a, a one gas, two gas. Generally means Proxy Reaper. So Reaper now on the way, and the Zealot's being built this time. Last time, Astray had to hold without it because, of course, he didn't see what was happening. He didn't see the, the proxy barracks until his probe finally got in the main base at a much later scout timing. But uh, the Reaper, the Zealot will be out here, which means this Reaper should get absolutely no damage done. But the thing that I find interesting in part is the fact that, uh, well, that, well, I guess the natural timing's not, natural timing's fine, never mind, uh, from Astray. But the interesting thing, of course, the fact that uh, Special has more interesting ideas about how he wants to play this game of StarCraft. He's proxying a factory, and this positioning makes me think he might want to try to lift into the main. Now, the Zealot will find this, and that is a big deal in and of itself. Uh, he's not going to be able to do too much to it. But look at what the Zealot's doing here. Okay, so I thought the Zealot was going to be doing traditional role. You know, stay at home, uh, mind the kids, and make sure that it is the probes that, or the, make sure it's the Zealot that dies instead of the probes. You know, the old um, uh, Black Widow effect. Except that's with, with uh, the, the male spider. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, regardless... You know, the Zealot should die so the probes do not, but now uh, the Zealot running across the map. Well, certain. Oh, okay. Back that up. Reaper gets two probe kills. The Stalker knocks it down eventually, but the Zealot does not run across the map as I kind of expected it to. Because Astray, by the way, did put a pylon in the wall. So there is no true wall here that the, the Zealot should be able to find his way through. Uh, but he wanted to make sure that the factory was delayed. So the factory was delayed. Let's get it out. Astray. It does not have to worry about a factory being lifted into his main base for constant cloaked widow mine production, which is, I think, what would have happened. And the, well, the Reapers of Special have to go home. This, this pylon will, will be killed, but I think that is absolutely a sacrifice that Astrea is willing to make because he certainly made the wall messy. He forced a bunker out. He forced Special to go home with his aggression. Excuse me. Uh, to go home with his aggression now, well, by the time these Reapers arrive, once again, the Stalkers are going to be out. I think we already have two on the map, third one on the way. So, or maybe, it, maybe one Stalker, one Sentry. But regardless, the Reapers don't represent a lot of threat anymore because the Stalkers are pretty good against them. So we're going to have to see what, how much this actually does get done. And one Reaper getting rather low, but probes are now starting to fall just a little bit. And there we go. There's the dead probe. Second probe falls. And this is a little night. Well, this is actually, first of all, fantastic KDA charge positioning, but... It's, it's starting to be something for special, but he doesn't really have a way out of this base. To the best of my knowledge, there is no Reaper Cliff in the third, but uh, well, he's just going to use that opportunity to try to dump, jump back into the main base. And this Reaper shouldn't kill much, but it will get a full scout to the main base. And that, that is something, at the very least. You, know, you kill a couple workers, you get a full scout, that's fine. But a, uh, a special's natural is completing. Really, a special's third base completes. And that tells the story all its own.
So straight out getting that robo as he did in game number one. I wouldn't be surprised to see quick Colossus in this game, to be totally honest. What is our, yeah. With, with four gas here, this does feel like a more heavy robo uh, connection play. Will this be another late night? Not to the level that Saturday night's Dark Moon Def Def. Saturday nights, we do WTL into EPT Koreas though. Ooh, Medivac will not go down. Uh, but Soccer's Will is a nice little kickoff there from a special, minimizing damage, maximizing reward. Um, yeah, we do EPT Korea every Saturday night. It starts at 11 p.m. Eastern. It goes until about two or three in the morning. Um, so that, yes, those are very late nights. Uh, but this, uh, the WTL broadcast by itself, the VOD is about four hours long, and generally the, our broadcast is about three-ish hours, right? Because we we cut it, we cut out a significant number of ads. But you like move your your desktop and monitors to the living room. Yeah, you, you do that. I mean, I just have my my one desk where I do everything in stocks. Now we'll find the medevac, but the scan here is very nice. I mean, the stock is getting very low. The cyclones do not go down. And well, that is a nice little bit of a trade there for special. Looking a much better in this game number two compared to game one. He got more damage done, took less damage, and he's really able to establish much more agency on the map. So for right now, the Liberator gets not too much done with the Cyclones here. They're gonna try to maybe five, try to die into the third base. We're gonna see, no, this is still Bio, I think. Uh, I'm just gonna ask if we're gonna see Mech from Special, but this is something that he will do, but I, I don't think so. Certainly no, Probes are gonna get pulled away and, oh, he's gonna force the Stalkers down, but the oh, Stalkers get a great shot. So, well, one Cyclone will fall, but Two lock-ons here. This means that these are gonna be some dead stalkers pretty quickly. Probes are pulled away from the position, and Astray can't deal with this liberator all that well. He has this third base, but he's not allowed to mine from him just because of the cyclone pressure, which is just really overpowering at the moment. Now Stark's gonna find his way on the high ground, trying to really do something, but he's not gonna find it. Now the low cyclone runs away. This is like five dead stalkers here. And the cyclone, or excuse me, the liberator is gonna get more stalkers. His special is getting far more than he ever should have with this he, seven stalkers a century four probes for like a liberator and well not three cyclones but one cyclone was the original setup that is insane that is a well played by special now he cancels the ba uh, the uh the bunker he's got his third base on the way uh, additional barracks ebay so he is going by i think we well always a little bit of a question in your mind but Special is, is going bio in this game, but Estrella, despite the damage he took, he's got his fourth base on the way. He's probing up like a madman. And Estrella, he has an addiction. It's, it's not often talked about, and we, we need to break the stigma. He has a probe addiction. He builds, uh, he likes to macro harder than many Protoss players do. Against Terran in particular, there was a game I cast where he, we went up to, uh, I think it was against Braddock. He went up to 116 probes. And I think uh, as the game was ending, I think his final round completed, he went up to 122. So 71 is really barely enough to take the edge off. It, it makes it, it takes the shakes down slightly, but it does not satisfy. So we're going to have to see really how far uh, Estrella chases the dragon in this game number two. But for right now, plus one attack is done. Extend Thermal Lance only halfway done, which is a bit annoying. It does, well, I mean, these, uh, the Colossus don't fight nearly as well against the Marauders in particular. Yeah, they outrange them, unlike, say, previous expansions, but not by all that much. Now, by all, there's a demon in the natural. We're just going to find a probe and shield battery. Well, we'll go up at the very least. The probe will go down. And special immediate. Oh, yeah, this is a good move. So immediately, he's going to realize that there is that base on the bottom side. He's going to pick up in his medevac, run down to the bottom side of the map. On the on the understanding, on the idea that Astraea can't really defend all four bases quite yet. He, in fact, Astraea is kind of relying on... The fact that the push is probably only going to be from one direction, he can probably hold that. Maybe two. There we go. Double drop unloads onto this fourth base. Now, Australia does have to rotate over. Do we have anything getting set up here for special? It kind of looks like we do. And actually, this is going to be a recall of almost the, the entire army of special. Or uh, of Australia, excuse me. Exactly. Probe amphetamine. Uh, yeah, that's the way to talk about Bibby Jump. Okay, the drop now into the third base. Special's really starting to... It doesn't really feel like Estrella is ever positioning where he needs to be. Colossus will rotate over. A couple workers fall. Yeah, actually, you know what? The Colossus between the third and the fourth and the, the gateway army in the main and the natural area is, is decent enough, but we don't have charge yet, I don't think. So 
this army is di oh no we do i'm sorry never mind what am i saying both medivacs go down but 11 probes have died here as the drop finds position on the bottom side astrea uh he needs to chase the dragon harder he, he's lost 13 probes he's only on 65. And hey gary again how's it going hope you're having a great night i am although uh, unfortunately we had ultimate uh we defer we had the semifinals for my ultimate league and we were the first seed and we played against the fourth seed of team and we lost on universe point 14 13 as it got as the sun set on us but in my i hold the fact that the other team was wearing white and we were wearing darks meant that they could see the disc and them and each other better than we could see our our teammates that's my excuse <laughs> anyways here comes a drop from special into the pocket base of astrea at this point he heals the zelnaga which means he's really not worried about getting scouted out all that much but of course, Stray is moving on to the next level of his tech. As a, as a special adds on those Vikings, while well, Stray is moving on to Disruptor play, which is you know, far more powerful. So a bunch of Stalkers will warp in here. A whole bevy of them, a clutch of Stalkers, in fact. The mine goes down, doesn't really get all that much. So Stalker fleet forward, Medivac will fall. It looks like on the bottom side, Stray is handling the pressure from Special well enough. Yeah, he will. So Stalkers fleet forward, uh, do they get, they don't get the Medivac, but the, the, the Archons and the Colossus, they do a great job. So yes, Stray does find himself down one gateway from producing but it seems like he might want to get active on the map here he's got a big army he's at 79 he's 79 army supply he's got plus two attack done plus one armor soon to complete and with the addition of these disruptors it feels like this is absolutely something that he might be able to make happen but he certainly doesn't want to take the fight piecemeal he needs to bring all of his army together so uh, bring all those colossus together bring the zealots together maybe set us around but uh, special is very much he's cranking out these vikings building them two at a time double stargate play from special which is kind of funny because this is something he enjoys in tbt as well a bit different but uh feels like for the most part we've seen turn players really move away from double viking for, or from four viking from double uh starport production uh relying instead on ghosts and better surrounds ahoy tater tutor your heart ability feel the well Yarhar, fill the DD. Do what you wish for a pirate is free. Something, something. You are a pirate. Okay. 2-2 two, two, just about done here for special. Plus two attack on the way for the air units, but not there just yet. It's actually, Estrella finds a bit of an interesting position where he blinks down Viking Falls. But now, Estrella's kind of zoning special out, but zo uh, special's also zoning Estrella out. Now, Estrella's trying to take the gold, and I don't know that special saw that, but it feels like he might. We're going to see a bunch of zealots. Warp in the upper left face as Astraea tries to take his fight in the bottom right. So it's very hard now for Special to be everywhere he needs to be. But really, this is two positions that are the furthest possible positions on the map away from each other while still talking about where uh, Special can be safely, right? With his demand. So eight workers will fall. And uh, we're going to maybe see some supply depots go down here as well. And the Stalkers are doing a decent job of bodyguarding these bosses. But it still takes some fairly significant damage. But still, nine SCVs have fallen. Astraea really just posturing in the middle of the map and uh unfortunately well fortunately if you if you're worried about astray's mental health his addiction to probes is not spiraled out of control he's only on 79 on these five bases which i think is perfectly respectable this is uh having it a special or excuse me astray is having his glass of probes after a long day he's not you know desperately mainlining probes uh you know, guzzling boxes of probes, or uh, buzzling container, guzzling containers of probes. No, he's just having a nice glass of probes at the end of a long day. Now the stalkers, a bunch of them find their way into the natural where yet more workers will go down. In fact, the entire mineral line is getting get shattered here. Mar Marauders, they, they run down, but they don't do all that much. Hey, Tamron, thanks so much for follow. But uh, the stalkers here, because they can shoot up and they do bonus damage to armored, that's just a dead base. So now a special is on, I want to say three bases, maybe even just only two orbitals. So uh, nice move there from Estrella, certainly, but we're gonna have to see whether he can take this fight in the middle of the map. He's really lacking a lot of anti-air, which means that he has to keep these Colossus very, very far back. But they're actually a little bit exposed. Drop on the bottom left side here. Vikings trying to take the fight, but it's just a big surround. Big disruptive shots as well coming in from Estrella, and the yeah, Espresso's gonna knock the Colossus down, but at what cost? I don't know how much it really does matter. Stark's now knocking down a lot of these Vikings. They're flying over an Archon, and Stark's on the back right side with the, uh, soon to be plus three attack, because they do have plus three attack. So all the Vikings fall. If he wants to. Yeah, he's realized this. He's immediately, he's immediately going back into Colossus production. The Destructors have been good, but again, the Colossus, if there's nothing to deal with them, they're great. So Special, unfortunately, he does have to tap out. And Strand takes the first 2-0 win of the day for Alpha X, putting them up 2-0 in their pursuit of top billing in WTL.
in the bottom left, in the blue. He has the best PvP play in the world. He is Max Pax. The upper right in the red. For Alpha X, he's down. Yeah, I don't know about how I feel about Jian as a C, Aldebaran. On the one hand, he hasn't had insane. I understand Rain. Thank you so much for the follow. He hasn't had insane results. Uh, he had those two. He had those back-to-back -back G-Style Super Tournament finals, but really has been about it. He took down Maru, of course, in Katowice, but that was a best of three after Maru had already qualified for playoffs. And uh, of course, it, that was that was foreign tournament Maru, who never does particularly well. Although he did make the finals of Valencia uh, about a month. Uh, wow. Three months ago. Valencia feels like it was yesterday. I'm a big fan, though, uh, when we talk about, um, the, the conspiracy theories around Jean. I'm a big fan of the fact that uh, he's actually just secret, secretly a Danish prince, which is what's happening, which then, uh, or, um, uh, yeah, Danish prince. Which, considering what Queen Margaret did, where, uh, where she went and, uh, Strip the royal titles out of a lot of the Danish royal family, you would think Max Pex could show his face now. You know? Like, you're no longer a prince. You no longer have to worry about it. Uh, but really, I mean, realistically, probably, it's just probably some protective parents and a very private person. I don't see at this point there's there's no winning for Max Pax because the hype around him showing his face at this point makes it almost not worth it. What does have me surprised though is we don't have Max Pax doesn't have like a VTuber. He's like VTubers are becoming a thing. I don't I'm not going to pretend I don't understand why they're so popular uh, compared to like seeing actual people, but it's neither here nor there. It's you know I'm not the target audience, so it's whatever. But. I mean, they exist in part because people don't want to show their real faces. They they, they want to have this VTuber that allows them to stream and effectively have a persona. Uh, they're becoming more mainstream but back in Oprota. And their community, yes, they are a thing. But... Anyways, I'm surprised Max Pax doesn't have some sort of VTuber setup because, again, that, that would allow him to... Have be, be on webcam and not be on webcam at the same time. But here comes Max Pax on the other side of the map. The patented Max Pax aggression. An adept this time on top of the Zell. And it's going to start to shell away at this pylon. But there's a stalker here. And we're going to see Steel Battery go up. So I don't think Max Pax gets much. He might get in the pylon a little bit. Max Pax actually taking damage on the other side. Two. Oh, no. Sorry. Uh, Zell actually will show up here. And uh, this, the adept runs forward. Does this pylon go? No, it's not going to go down because the, the... Oh, no. Oh, oh wow. Good good math there, Max Pax. Absolutely. He has the pylon. Never mind. Now the adept is going to get surrounded, but he's going to get two workers at the very least, and it's going to be three. What the hell are they exactly, Baby Jama? So um, VTubers are... I mean, they're, they're 3D avatars that are mapped to a webcam. So they somewhat react. Not perfectly, but they do kind of somewhat react to your facial movements. Yeah, again, I, I personally, I don't I don't understand the appeal of VTubers versus, like, watching actually someone's face. But, you know, again, it's fine. Uh, again, I'm not judging. I just, it, it's not for me. Um, but again, it seems like it's a perfect thing for Max Pax. Okay, adept in the main base here, but or excuse me, Oracle trying to find his way into the main base, but uh, there's a shield battery, and yes, you it takes like seven damage instances to kill a probe, so one will go down, but Max Pax's not really getting a lot here. He does find himself up two workers from the damage that he found, uh, and his warp gate was actually a little bit faster. Certainly, his twilight is much faster here, so his, or, sorry, certainly Zhao's twilight is much faster though, so Blink is on the way already. The, the twilight of Max Pax only just now completing, and man, the the, the frequency with which we have Max Pax and uh, we have, a, sorry, WTL, we have the, the nameplate swapped incorrectly. i never failed to get me. But anyway, Devil Oracle right now, which means that you just need units here. Nothing will keep these probes alive. Shield batteries don't, but the Oracle dies and only two workers go down. So Max Pax, uncharacteristically a little sloppy with this Oracle control. We normally wouldn't see him commit to that and, l and lose as much as he did.
Although, um, talk about VTubers, I'm like half tempted to go and have a, a like a donation reward or a channel point reward that 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 turns me into a um, turns my webcam off and or uh, and turns me into like a um, and, and uh, get like a Frodo VTuber, right? Like if people span enough of the Bay of Frodo emote, uh, you know, I turn into Frodo. Um, but anyway. I don't know, it's, it's probably, it's probably more, it's probably, uh, not, we're not worth. Anyway, stalkers from Max Vex are going to try to find this third base. Notice they're targeting down the base, not the stalkers just yet. But part of this is Blink, Blink is done for Zhao, so Max Vex is not going to kill anything, and especially not with the shield battery popped. And here we go. Once again, the pressure coming in from Max Vex to be able to shield battery here. And, uh, well, the, quite frankly, what seems to be the superior blink for Max back, I don't really think this is going to get that much done. And now the Stalkers are starting to fall. Yes, the Sentry did die for Zhaon, but, oh, those Stalkers are so low. So, Zhaon blinks in, he gets about one. DTs try to find their way in for Max Vax, but they're just not going to be successful there. And so Max Max, he's committed to the Oracle play. He got four workers, I think. Really not all that much less than Oracle. He's committed to DT play and has gotten absolutely nothing done. So he's nursing this three worker lead again from the minor damage he got done earlier. But as Zhaon, again, it really is not taking that much damage. I'm not super worried about him. He's got his plus one on the way. So his, again, his forge is faster. His upgrades are faster. Congratulations, back in Proto. Seems like, like, seems like Max Pax wants to get aggressive, but wants to get... But remember, a lot of his stalkers are very low, so the supplies are equal, but again, there's a lot more HP on the stalkers of Jean for the moment. He did micro uh, with the stalkers just a little bit better, and we're going to start to see some of them go down. Jean seems like he wants to blink on top of this, but again, not really going to be able to do that that much. Done is uh, the, the DTs have forced the army of... Or the stalkers forced the army of Jean away from the third base, so DTs run in and get a little bit of damage. Sorry, no sleep, and a lot of ultimate has made me a sleepy boy, so I'm going to stand up for the rest of this. That's fine. Uh, disruptor shots are on the way, or disruptor, not shots, disruptors are going to be on the way for Zhaon here as the game goes a little bit later. We're going to have to see really what timing he opts to take his fourth base, because that is often when we start to see PvP start to get uh, really interesting, when they start to go and really start to break it down. So for now, Max Pax, it's, uh, he's defending, he's attacking, excuse me, into a third base, a three base for us, which is always a little bit hard to do. And one thing we got to point out here, Zhaon has lost some sentries, but he keeps rebuilding them. He keeps staying at that three sentry count, which is not something the Max Pax team is super keen on doing, which of course gives you access to Guardian Shield, is that uh, DT probably should die. Uh, gives you access to plentiful Guardian Shields, Force Fields if you need more scouting. The Starks, they move forward and they will all go down. So Max Pax may be a bit of an opportunity here onto this fourth base, but now Zhaon blinks forward. His, his plus one is done now so really nice timing for max Pax hitting before those upgrades are done max Pax is starting to build himself a bit of a supply lead he's up about 10 workers the, well he's down a little bit army supply but up at 10 workers because his fourth base was just faster and that means he's going to be able to build more stuff Actually, now I'm actually going to find a bunch of these stalkers. These stalkers need to blink away. They got to run. Zealots on the flank as well. And uh, the army really of Zhaon is just out of position dealing with the DTs in the main base. Uh, but here comes the army of Zhaon just a little bit more. Plus one done for both sides. So there really is no advantage right there. Recall of the observer. Uh, yeah, I guess got to be. Yeah. Okay, recall of the, the observer because there was no uh, cannon in the main base. So actually, we don't see cannons on the way just yet. As now Zhaon is moving into disruptor play. But so too is Max Pack. So. Minimal advantage there. I think Zhaon's uh, disruptors might be out a little faster. And actually, I think this is two Robo to one. So actually, that will be rather, rather nice in general. No. Okay, Max Max will dodge the shot. We're hitting that point now as disruptors in the field where zealots are not super useful. But Max Max tries a nice blitz. It's not going to work out. 
uh, Zealots are not really useful in your main army anymore. They're great on run buys. They are great for the, the random uh, charge lot DT wars, but in the main army, the disruptors will start to thread them even more so than Archons will because, well, they just die immediately instead of die after a couple of shots. So now Zhao's found a bit of an opportunity here, maybe on the left side. Disruptors are trailing along and looks like Max Tech may be able to catch down some of these reinforcements from Zhao. As now Zhao links on top of the, of the Stalker, gets that, or not Stalker, gets on top of the, the cannon, knocks that down. We got a bunch of Zealots and DTs warping in though defensively. Max Pack's coming in with this army, and I don't really think that we're going to see too much out of, of Zhao here. Now Disruptor Shark goes out and Wolf, no, never mind, that's five Stalkers dead immediately. And this may be something that, oh, oh no, okay, Zhao cannot fling on top of that. I'm just, just going to run away. Now we're hitting the point, by the way, that the sentries, they don't really do nearly as much, especially because this Guardian Shield gets turned on. They are very, very slow. So they just died to the disruptors, but Zhao sensing blood here blinks on top of the disruptors. One of them will go down. Second one goes down. Max Pax, he returns the favor, but it is a 20 army supply lead, 30 army supply lead for Zhao at this point. And now part of it is the Rami has to rally onto the other side, but Zhao is fine trading disruptors for disruptors at this point, because remember, he has double robo. Max Pax only on a single robo. Max Pax cannot reinforce the disruptor count nearly as quickly. And all of a sudden, Zhao is up 50 army supply. Now the Stalker's going forward, and they're going to knock down some of that. But these Disruptors that are coming in from Zhao, again, he's just able to go, and he's able to build more. And that means that he will continue to find more value. He's going to find this base on the bottom right side. Nice Daisy Trap. Uh, but the DTs, well, the Oracle's going to go down. The DTs don't seem to be detected for the moment, but Max Pack's on 88 workers. doesn't really matter, because I think he's going to lose this base. But actually, Stalkers, they rotate on over. And it seems like, yeah, Zhao needs to find more. So, yeah, well, okay. Stalker's blink forward, and unfortunately, the second Disruptor is not there just yet. One Disruptor is not going to go down. These defensive DTs, oh, uh, unfortunate. Defense, uh, the, with the defensive DTs from Max Pax on the backside actually get a couple Disruptors in three. So, only one Disruptor in this army right now, despite the fact that Zhao is building more. But uh, Zhao also has a Disruptor, and Max Pax doesn't. He gets blinked upon, so that zoning position is rather nice. Stalkers will get the, dis the Disruptor at the end of the day, but this is just buying space, buying time. Five more probes have gone down. Max Pax, though, still on 87. He's still building ludicrous amounts of just, uh, probes at a time here, making up for the losses he has just by, you know, replacing them so damn quickly. But now the base will go down, and with the Disruptors here, notice how defensive uh, Zhao is being with the Disruptors. He's not putting them with his army. He's bringing them on the way back, and uh, Zhao with a couple DTs, he gets a full base. Or Max Pax with these DTs gets a full base. Zhao had to commit far more to this. Those DTs actually do a great job, a great job of putting Max Pax back into this game. The army supply lead not nearly as strong as it once was. And where is uh we're getting a bit base trade here, folks. It feels like uh tropical sacrifice in general uh, in PvP does tend to give us these base trades because there's so many attack paths. So Zhao has found the fourth base of Max Pax. Max Pax, though much quicker on the draw. He's gonna kill the fourth base of Zhao even quicker. So uh, the big deal, though, is that uh, it looks like Zhao is starting to get probes a little bit better, a little bit quicker. Disruptor shot, disruptor shot. Max Pax, okay, he's going to dodge. Whew. There's a second one where that came from. We're going to have to see how much damage that gets done as the DTs will start to fall. Cannons are here are nice. Disruptors go out. They're not going to find what they need. No stock blink on forward. How many shots do we have available? Looks like the answer is none. Target fire there for Max Pax is fantastic. If you're down, ideally, you send out all the shots at once. And Max Pax can target them all down. But unfortunately, he'd already staggered the shots. That's a problem. The Robo's going to get found out here. Stargate as well as down on the other side of the map. He's also finding effective value. And the defensive zealous defensive DTs are doing what they can. I think this is an observer from Zhao, not from Max Pax. But even still, the zealots have fallen. Zhao now is going to get knocked down onto two bases. But here's the thing. Zhao's already in the main base. He's depowering pylons. He's knocking down production. That really is the big deal. Recall goes in back into the main base, but I don't think that army was all that big on the recall. No, it wasn't whatsoever. Max Pax. Suddenly his army's dead. I think he took some, maybe big some disruptor shots. I don't understand what killed his army so quickly, but his 15 army supply to 73. Max Pax and Zhao both on three bases, but Zhao can produce things and Max Pax cannot. And yes, Zhao is down workers, but again, being down workers does not matter if you actually can fruitfully spend those workers that you have. So it will be one Nexus. Well, not one Max Nexus, but the main Nexus will go down. 
and Joan takes game number one. In the upper right, folks, in the blue, he's down one, fallen victim to a base trade, and, well, economy's not always better than army. He is max packs. In the bottom left, in the red, though, he's up 1-0, taking down the king of PvP. But trains together, folks, it's down. So again, this is a map, much like the previous, where you can go for single gate expand. And we know Max Packs, even if it's a map, you can't go for single gate expand. If you're Max Packs, you can't anyways. So, well, for right now, the question we ask ourselves is whether this is a real two gate expand. Or whether this is going to be a fake. Whether this is going to turn into three gate robo, uh, some sort of weird uh, Stargate pressure, as we can often see happen. I don't know. There are a couple different builds that you can go out of pantomiming the one gate expand build. That's for right now, both players... Uh, Denying that second guess for a time, trying to cut that one as much as they can, which means uh, that ideally you go for a gate expand. But if your opponent blocks you, then you do get the second guess. Eventually, you drop the cyber, and it's a little bit different. So, Max Pax is down, both find themselves blocked, which means they get the cyber, they get the second guess, and they uh, just come to terms with the fact that their gate, their their nexus will be much slower in this game. Obviously, Max Pax is washed up, uh, says chat. Max Pax is not washed up. Be real. Although he has been uh, not quite as dominant in PvP as of late. I mean, he's still very good. But he hasn't been the whole... I, mean, I think he still probably still even has the best PvP in the world. But uh, not quite the dominant level that he was showing through the spring and summer. His, uh, his form... <laughs> his PvP form right now, out of 117 maps, he's 198 of them. So he's only at 84% PvP win rate as of late. Recently 3 0 ring Harstam, 2 one Showtime. Uh, I don't know who Hansen is, that doesn't really count. Uh, and 2 0 Showtime again. So. It does have, he does have that one going for him. You know, for a while, Max Pax is uh, in like January of 2022. Max Pax's best matchup wasn't his wasn't his PvP. It was technically his PvZ in terms of like overall ranking. Overall rating. Which is very interesting. And now of course his PvP is, I mean, any player who has an 84% win rate in a matchup, yeah, and that probably is their best matchup. But Max Pax is gonna show across the map with the same pressure he showed us in game number one. Adept and Stalker, ideally trying to snipe a pylon down, but remember. Zhao got an adept in on the other side, and he was able to a. Uh, yes, he lost the pylon, but he killed his elf pretty easily. But b, he got the adept in, and he killed a couple workers in the exchange. So it really did work out pretty well for. Really worked out very well for Zhao. And now he gets his adept in once again. Forces the energy off the oracle, gets a probe. So it's a scout. It denies damage. He does not lose the pylon this time. And in general, just an overall better situation for Zhao in this game number two compared to game number one. Now the only thing you're worried about is the Oracle can dive on top of that Stalker and kill it, but the Oracle doesn't have a lot of energy because it had to turn the Pulsar Beam in ar on earlier and shit battery gets the Stalker back as full, or as full as it can be. Here's the difference, though. So we do see uh, Zhang. He's dropping shield batteries in the main of the natural, but Max Pax is waiting for those uh, for double orb play. And a sentry and a stalker does not really kill things all that quickly. In fact, it's going to be a dead sentry. So nice, nice pick off there for Zhang. Or for Max Pax, excuse me. He gets two workers. He gets uh, he gets the sentry as well. And that's a decent amount of gas going down. Uh, you want those sentries early because they give you pretty much unrestricted map vision. That means you have kind of a guaranteed scout of your opponent's main base more often than not. Now they try to dive in the main base. The stalker is actually not where they need to be. So this 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 Oracle control from Max Pax is a lot better than it was in game one, but even still only gets two workers. At least he doesn't lose the Oracle though. So Queen Daf Daf, you keep you've talked about your cat a couple times now. Uh 
I hope you understand that cat tax is in effect. You need to go join my Discord and post pictures of your cat in the, in the pets uh, channel. It's, this is this is mandatory, or you will get banned. Just, just so we're clear. <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. But uh, I do have a Discord that has a which has a channel just for people to post their pet pictures. Yes, that is uh, two workers for two oracles is a little bit is pretty weak. MW eighteen thirty two, but on the flip side, he didn't lose the oracle like he did in game number one. I'm kidding about the ban. I'm not kidding about the suggestion. Uh, okay, so Zhao, he's got a gateway on the right side of the map, and looks like he may want to put a lot of pressure onto this third base because if you open Stargate, you don't have quite as much defensive potential. You try to make up for it by pinning your opponent back home, but Zhao, he's not waiting. He's not really giving Max Pax the time of day that he wants. His oracles, I, okay, one oracle will not go down, just barely, but the sentries try to kill it. That's all. That's the tickle beams. Sometimes they do work out. Here comes the army of uh, of Jean. Remember, he has Blink as opponent. Actually, Max Pax has Blink now too. But the big deal, of course, is Guardian Shield. But one, uh, well, the Oracle, or excuse me, the Sentry does fall. That doesn't really get all that much done. The Guardian Shield doesn't stay alive long enough. And Jean, he kind of panic force feels the rest of that. So probes get pulled here. And well, there's a revelation. Oracle doesn't get much done. But actually, the funny thing is, by not doing much of anything, it was was a little bit of damage. His mining time was lost. And now Max Pex does have his forge on the way. Actually, forge is done. Upgrades are on the way. So Zhao will not have that upgrade advantage that he had in game one, which, you know, albeit small, was a fairly decent one here. So Max Pex, I it's funny. You look at him play PvP, and this is these have been fairly similar openers. You know? And granted, it was it was uh, Oracle opening, Stargate opening from Max Pax, and just a second gate opening after the base forge down, getting like a little faster. But then you just look at the worker count. And Max Pax just took his third faster, and he's up 15 workers all of a sudden through real minimal interactions. Zhao, if he wants to take game two, he's going to have to find tremendous damage on the counterattack, I think. And doesn't it's not saying he can't do that, but I mean, it's just Max Pax's macro is just so good. And now the stalkers on the other side of the map here are going to try to find maybe even a little bit more. Stay strapped behind, trying to paint these stalkers into an overcommitment, but shield battery overcharge is popped, and now the start of the max from back just a little bit is down going to take the bait. He blinks forward, but not into where the stasis trap is. So not the bait just yet. Oracle stays alive, drops the revelation in the natural. Oracle takes damage here as well. And again, while two workers, I think it was only he only got like two or four probes, is not an insane number. It's not what you want when you get double Oracle, though he's finding a lot of value uh, from these Oracles just in terms of vision in the mid game and as long as he, does, he doesn't lose both of them and certainly doesn't want to lose one of them as long as he doesn't yeah he can lose one doesn't want to lose two he's kind of fine but the stage trap finally triggers but it's too late is down uh, is now well fully forty max back back Okay, we'll go down, but Max Pax got his fourth base on the way uh Zhao thinks he's got an opportunity here remember he does not have a forge he what he has saved by not getting plus one by not getting a forge and honestly by not probing up super hard it means his army is now up about 16 army supply. He will try the I'm not saying he's gonna be able to uh be successful in this endeavor, but at least he has an army that can go fight what Max Pack says on Max Pack's side of the map. So first goal, trigger shield battery overcharge, but oh the adepts they get in the base. There's nothing really to stop him at this point. Now Stalker's trying to take the fight at the front, allowing these adepts to worry away, to knock down a significant component of the army support, the worker lead that Max Pax does have. This one Archon is just tanking so damn much, but it's going to go down very low. No shield battery. Targets it specifically. Heals it right back on up. Not the full necessarily, but back up the fighting strength, and now the shield battery it does go down. So no overcharge. No need to pop the overcharge. No need to force that to happen because, well, the shield battery is just dead. Anyways, the Archon rather low. It pops like a blue balloon, and now here comes Max Pax down the ramp once again, trying to make this fight happen as Jaun looks to put Alpha X in a victorious position here in week four, day three. It looks like he might be able to do so. 59 army supply, 231. Yeah, Max Pex has plus one, but he really does not have the army supply needed to actually take the fight. Jaun's army is so damn low, though. So many of these stalkers on orange, on red, on in transparent HP in this game, but even still, the val the combined massed volleys of stalkers that Jaun has, well, they are you know, they are speaking loud and clear that Jaun may be able to 2-0 Max Pax in this series. Every time Max Pax tries to take a fight on one side, he cannot bring his army together. And High Templars, they warp in, but they're all not. That's one Archon that's dead in the morph. The other dead Archon dies before it can even be born. And now, Jaun, he's just denying every position. Yeah, Max Pax gets 2 0 Max Max gets 2-0. Bye, Alpha X now secures the 4-0, and 
Now it's just for map for map score. Anyways, folks, in the upper left, in the blue, he is a four size storm. Now only four map score. Cannot win the week. It is Gumiho. In the upper right, in the red, he is the recent GSL finalist taking down Gumiho. On the way, it's Ragnarok. So we get some nice TBZ to round out our evening. I say some nice TBZ to round out the week, but Gumiho has been doing this a lot. Uh, it's going to be three racks coming from Gumiho in this game. Number one, we saw this from Gumiho versus Dark last night in EPT Korea and Dark smashed it. We're going to have to see whether uh, Ragnarok is similarly prepared. He did not open pool first. That's something that we saw um, Dark doing in that series, but he does have an Overlord on the way. Not quite in position to scout, but we'll see the SCVs running forward to drop a bunker. Here goes, I mean, technically it was this morning. I don't know. It was before I went to bed, so it was last night. Yes, Queen Daft Daft, we can still be friends. Hoax, you should join my Discord because Queen Daft Daft just posted pet pictures. Six pound cat with only three teeth. So one teeth per two pounds. So if, if your cat, if you're uh, uh, Queen Daft Daft, if your cat moves up to eight pounds, does it get a fourth, to a fourth tooth? Anyway, here comes the pressure from Ragnarok, or from Gumiho, excuse me, onto Ragnarok's natural. And Ragnarok is, again, going to do the same thing, the exact same hold we saw Dark do in his game, although no Roach Warren down just yet. Where he just mines out the other side, uh, the north, the, the pocket base, and then it's fine. He just kind of gives up the natural holds with spines, but only a single spine right now, because it seems like... I don't know, it seems like Ragnarok might think that this is only three racks, and not, or only two racks, and not three racks. It does feel like you need that second spine. So for now, this base is just going to go down. I'm somewhat surprised not to see that larva get used for a couple extra links. Um, but we're gonna, oh, no, 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 no. This is bad for Ragnarok. He brings a spine on the low ground here, and that means all these links will go down. Well, here go. Gumiho just goes straight right on past it. So probes that, or, well, not probes. Uh, drones have to get pulled, and workers are starting to go down, but it's a nice surround, actually. You know what? This is a nice surround from Ragnarok. Six workers still have gone down, though, so Ragnarok only has 11. Uh, Gumiho is building SCVs behind this. It's weird to talk about macroing out of a three racks, but it seems like that might just happen in this game because Gumiho is up 13 army supply, or 13 supply in general. He's up 12 workers. He's got his natural on the way, and he's going to continue, I think, to rally forward into this position. The spine keeps going forward, but remember, this creep is not long for this world. The queen does have to go and build a creep tumor. So the spine will technically outrank it. The queen's just dead. Uh, this, is, this is very much a bot fold. Uh, this is very much a bot fold coming in from Ragnarok in this game. A couple more links will pop out, but they cannot escape the DPS of the bunker. As Yes, the spine does go forward. That's nice. That's excellent. Uh, Lings now, they're going to try to find the Marines as they pop out here, but they could have denied the natural. They're not going to do so. So yes, these Marines will fall, but they pop out two at a time. And if Gumiho is smart, he's just going to put them on the other side of the uh of the barracks and there we go so this is getting a little bit awkward for gumio but he's gonna get his natural up it may have to be forced to be lifted lifted of course i'm very surprised that gumio is not taking his pocket base because then you can mine that you can mine that so efficiently as the terran but certainly this is distracting out of ragnarok to say the least uh and as the marine runs back i mean the bunker is here so the lings are being annoying in that way. They've prevented, they've ended the final aggression here. Now, yeah, Gumiho is in a bit of an awkward situation. He actually has no, uh, he's building, he's going up to five racks with this factory, but he has no defense at all. Uh, so this is a bit interesting. The Ling count, how many Marines do we have? I'm not sure, actually. Um, but anyway, I just can't go for production of the main base. This is, this is a weird time, but uh, I don't, the Marines don't, or the Lings don't get through this. And the SCVs, yeah, the, um, the SCVs aren't even running, or the, the Marines aren't even returning home. They're just holding that position 
into the natural now ragnarok did scout the fact that this is extra barracks this is going to be a two base all in off of five racks and more lings will arrive now but at this point the barracks they return home and that should be that so uh, ragnarok trying to establish more position on the map and i i know you're saying uh gumiho is dead pure gozo i don't think so uh i think he is kind of fine actually the uh, Ragnarok was not able to punch through the wall. The command center or the orbital was able to be an orbital uh, and, and complete. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now Gumio will be on two base. It's a little bit slower, but he's got double orbital. That's fine. This is still a two base circle. Now this, this bunker is finally going to get broken down, but not super quickly. And actually the Marines are going to pop out here, which means the spine, uh, the spine doesn't go down. I don't think. Oh, wait, maybe. Okay, pop back into the bunker, dodging the spy shots. And Gumio gets the, yeah, he's going to get the spy down. So that really unlocks this position. Now, uh, Ragnarok will be able to take his third base if he wants, as he builds a bunch more lings. And I feel like we might see a ling flood. Ten more lings are on the way. We're going to have to see. Uh, but okay, no, he's just going to take the third base, establishing more position. But this five racks all in coming out of Gumio feels mighty strong against the two base Zerg, who does not have a Baneling Nest or a Roach Warren, and is only just now getting his third base. Yes, Gumiho is miles ahead. Furlongs, kilometers, if you will. I don't choose your... Uh... I don't choose your, your unit of measurement, but regardless, uh, Gumiho is, is massively ahead. He's got medevacs out of the way. Or medevacs already on the map here. He's going to knock down that overlord. Stim and combat shields will complete rather soon, and we're just going to see Gumiho look to overwhelm Ragnarok with oodles and oodles and I don't know oodles and oodles of of Marines maybe a couple tanks if possible uh and Ragnarok's gonna try to defend this as well as as much as he can with a bunch of roaches because that overlord will fall but I don't know that roaches are gonna do it So this drop right now is not going to get... It, it, drop, not, it denies the creep, but it's not going to get that much done. You tried, baby John. You, were, you weren't successful, but you did try. Now, I want to point out, by the way, something interesting that Ragnarok is doing. He's taking his lair at his third. And you might say, well, why does this matter? Well, that gives you an extra 250 HP to play around with if the pressure comes in through the natural. But... It does feel at least a little bit like this pressure is going to be arriving. Well, okay, no, we'll go to the natural, yeah. Um, so may maybe this maybe this enables Ragnarok to hold onto his natural just a little bit ro uh, longer. But you know what's bad? When the Zerg player is going roaches and their army supply is 11 smaller than what the Terran has. Plus one is not going to be needed in this game. Bio stems on top of everything. Overlords go down. Ragnarok is supply block to hell and back to hell back and hell back again. Ravagers will fall eventually. Roaches going down. Ling streaming into their immediate doom because this is a meat grinder here. And uh, there is really not a lot, really not much of anything that Ragnarok can do in this game. He's down 20 supply, and again, he is the Roach player. So, Gumio gets revenge maybe a little bit for the GSL. He gets certainly revenge for his teammates earlier, but it does not matter for the week standing. And now we're going to have to see whether Gumio has a 2-0 in his pocket or whether this is going to be a 5-1. Neighbor left, folks. He took game one. Can he take the second here? He is a Gumiho. Bottom right, in the red. Down one. Ragnarok. Endure of days. Thanks so much, external punch. Uh, external punch for the, uh, yeah, tier one sub. Six months in a row. That's a lot of months. That's about 25% um, of the time that I've been uh, casting and streaming on this channel pretty consistently. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, my spirit. Like, yeah, we don't... We don't wait around. Uh, if I have access to the VOD, why would I Why would I watch the, the intermediaries? <laughs> why would I wait for the games to happen when I can just fast right forward through it? It's great. That's actually the second reason why I enjoy doing a WTL uh, at, uh, at night instead of in the morning. The, the, the primary one, of course, is that I can actually provide WTL coverage to a North American audience and that I can watch all the games because I am not getting up that early. I'm not getting up at 8 a.m. on a Saturday. 
not I'm certainly not getting up at 8 a.m. on a Sunday after doing EPT Korea that ends around 2 or 3 in the morning. And Zephyr Street, thank you so much for the follow-up. And on Fridays, I can't do it because I work. So, whichever way you slice it, um, we do prefer. This is good for several reasons. It also means, uh, well, it's also good for my viewership, of course, but really it's because I, I enjoy WTL. So, uh, Ragnarok not fooled, not baited into a, um, I have no idea what you mean, Marty V. Buren. Uh, we're not, Ragnarok has not been lulled into a false sense of, uh, anxiety on Cosmic Sapphire, which of course is the Zerg map. This was Ragnarok's map pick. Uh, he's not opening pool first. He's not worried about another proxy rack. This is something that Gumiho is probably only, only going to do once a series. Although we did see Gumiho do it twice uh, against Dark for EPT Korea. Um, I'm still going to say last night. I know people take exception to that. But last night, and he got bopped by it. He, he, Gumiho got bopped twice trying to do it. So uh, it doesn't really matter, though, because, well, Gumiho actually won with it against Ragnarok today. Where does he go from here? So Cosmic Sapphire is a map that is only six bases. So you might say, well, this isn't really a Zerg map, is it? It's only six bases. It's somewhat small. But the thing is, it's actually decently sized, even if the base count is rather lacking. And more importantly than that, it's wide open around the third, wide open around the fourth. So the Zerg can very much punish the Terran, either for getting aggressive on them or when they decide to move across the map. Uh, it's big in terms of content, yes. It's... Um, much bigger than the Chinese scene. So for for context here, the WTL prize pool is WTL winter. First place is $11,000. Total prize pool is about $40,000, which sounds like a lot, but then you realize it is a team league. So, you know, good, but not insane. If uh, like DPG won last season, DPG uh, has Six player or has five players on it. You know, that's each player getting around two thousand dollars ish. Uh, of course, and who knows what their contract is. So really it's not weighty in terms of fine of um, financial effort is oh the drone will go down. Nice job there, Gumio. But it is pretty weighty in terms of prestige. Uh Rainer left uh Clash in parts because he wanted to be able to play in the WTL and well Clash was not going to buy a couple more. The, 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 was not going to sign the more the extra players that they needed to be able to play in the WTL. So that was one of the big reasons why Rainer left and he joined uh, Kaitsa instead. At least to my knowledge, players really do. Play, it, players really do care about the team league. Um, and now, of, of course, and it's the closest thing we have to Pro League. Pro League doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. Although. I mean, man, what I wouldn't give for Pro... Oh, I love this, actually, by the way, from Gumio going for a Hellion opener. Uh, or for a Raven opener, excuse me, into Battle Cruisers. But uh, we have a... Ragnarok. He's got a little bit of aggression on the mind. He's building five over... He, built, he was building seven overlords at a time at one point. I don't know that he is a Roach Warren. So, maybe not. He's just, he's just building Roaches. Or he's just building drones, excuse me. Okay. Uh, when you see that many overlords at once this early on, it does kind of make you think that this is aggressive, but... Apparently not. Anyway, Ragnarok will scout that this, yes, this is a BC opener. We're going to have to see how he does, in fact, choose to respond now. In part, Ragnarok wins. I'm sorry, I didn't talk about this. Ragnarok was super greedy. He, um, his speed is just about done. Normally, the, the latest speed you'll get in a game is about four minutes. It's 530. This is a full two minutes slower. He really delayed his gas. And of course, part of the reason, well... I actually don't know how much he, he delayed his guess because he did get overlord speed. But regardless, Gumiya was not able to punish the very slow uh, Ling speed. Now speed is done. Uh, the Raven, though, doing a good job of staying away from the Queen Czar. So it's denying creep for the most part, which is the goal of this Raven opener. You just keep with your Hellions. And there's just kind of this border, this boundary of creep, that uh, th this boundary position that the creep cannot pass for the most part. to Hellions and Auditors are going to find their way to the third base. Drone get pulled briefly. Eight workers will go down. BC in the natural, but it doesn't seem to do nearly as well. Oh, the lineup. The lineup. Gumiho. Oh, he gets 20. He gets 21 workers. And I don't know how much the Battle Cruiser got, but um, Hellions dive into the natural even more. This is a lot of Hellions here, but it seems like the Queens, for the most part, are able to deal with this. It's going to be 22. 
That's nice. At the very least, we can keep the ticker up as we see what's happening here. But the Hellions seem like they have to run away for the most part because the Queens are going to be able to force them away. But this Battlecruiser, it only has four kills. And uh, it's got to be careful. It's getting rather low. It does not have a teleport just yet. It's got 46 HP. About 40 HP, excuse me. So the Battlecruiser does have to stay in the dead airspace. Wait to teleport on back. And the Spire will not do all that much. But here come Hellbats. Interesting decision as the Raven joins as well. But the Banelings come rolling forward. The Raven is dead. And a lot of the Hellbats actually go down as well. So nice hold there. Ragnarok at the end of things. Still though, 26, wor 26 workers go down. And that's a lot. Ragnarok is going to have to really struggle to bring his game back at this point. Uh, Mind Spirit asking though, what is my main race? I play Zerg. Uh, although I don't have enough time to play as much as I would like. Uh, peak MMR is like 44, 49, I think. Something like that. No. A little lower than that. Effectively M2. Low M2. Hellions now find their way into the third base, or I guess it's the fourth base. But uh, not a lot of them, but of course, Hellbats, they make the difference. So Lings will show up and... Well, there's a Hellbats morph. The Lings have to run away, but Ragnarok is really leaning into this, uh, leaning into this count just a little bit. As he's uh, <laughs> leaning into the screen count, excuse me, but four workers get, ten workers go down. Hellions continue to find more and more, and, and Goop, Ragnarok can just not find a position to stabilize. He's just doing that thing that you do where he builds more and more workers in hopes that at some point he will be happy in this game because 44 drones have died before the eight minute mark. Yeah, Fulminate, that's just wrong. That would be too broken. I, like to well, I would like to point out, by the way, that while um, everyone's been talking about how Zerg is Imba, Terrans are the only two, uh, they're the only players that have won um, five DreamHacks or five GSLs. Are Terran. You have Clem and you have Maru. And maybe, I don't think Teja won five DreamHacks. That's what I'm saying. Clearly it's Terran Imba. It's just... Not enough people can play it at a, high, at a high enough level. And double seven Doke, thank you so much for the follow. BC's not gonna fly on top of me. One thing's gonna go down here. And Yamato Cannon goes down, but there's so many Queens. They just gotta teleport home. It's not often that Queens force a teleport home. Normally the battle cruiser just runs, runs away, but that was a good position they were able to find. As now Gumio has this fourth base up and uh, the Mutas have gotten nothing done because Cyclones are powerful. One lock-on is enough damage to kill a Muta if the Mutas stay in vision. So uh, once the lock-on happens, the Mutas just have to run away. Or if you're really good at the micro, you pulled out back those individual Mutas. But even still, Cyclones do a great job of dealing with the, uh, the Muta harassed for some extent. But 1-1 one, one attack upgrades are going to show up here. Lock-ons go down. Scan goes off. But just, yeah, yeah. Stays out of range. Just gets out of range because... Uh, the mutas are not constrained by the the vagaries of map design. They can just fly over everything and be fine. The mutas actually, they're starting to get a little bit here. They're going to go and they're going to knock down those missile turrets at the start. That's very nice. And getting tech labs on the, uh, the factories is actually fantastic. It means that, well... Thors don't go out. It means tanks don't go out. And it really does unlock uh, more pressure from Ragnarok later on. It's like going to get another lock on here, but Mina should be able to get. Yeah, it gets out of range. and out of vision range, too. But now, are starting to hit the field. Not enough, actually, to fight this. Not really. Yamato's go down. And, well, the Battlecruiser is going to teleport home. But we noticed only one of them is, is running super quickly. But now, four crushes arrive, and that's fine. Actually, third Battlecruiser arrives as well. Oh, interesting. Gumio's going more than this. That's the fourth Battlecruiser. Now, folks, talk about Zerg propaganda or whatever you want. Uh, I think there's one thing that we can all agree on, and that is the fact that uh, there is not one race that complains more on forums than Terran players. There we go. That's where we're united in that one. But anyways, he is playing the natural and uh, going to get a little bit more here. Just knocking down the gas. Honestly, knocking down the gas against mech is really important. But the Thor is going to get one volley. And of course, it's three Thor shots that kill Mutas. So oh, they're clumping up a little bit more. Cyclones lock on. These are getting very low, but the lock ons aren't on the proper mutas unfortunate unfortunate there the lock-ons on the other side and they're just yeah, they're dancing here ragnarok's getting so much done with these mutas and most importantly 
he has stemmed the bleeding. He has made it so that the consistent perpetual run buys are not happening anymore. So he's actually been able to max that. He's actually been able to build a bank. He's on 84 workers. And well, Gumio, I guess he's going to try to move in with his 3-3 because it feels like he could move out on 2-2 and maxed out mech army. His music will finally go down. Yeah, here comes the army. Okay, yeah. Talking about the 2-2 max out. Here is the 2-2 max out. And surprisingly, Gumio didn't have mech field before this. With how many cyclones he had, I would have thought he did. But anyways, how fast are going to morph as the mailings are right on into them. Oh, that is not what you want there, Gumio. Not at all. Great files as well. So Gumio loses a lot of those Hellbats, a lot of the stuff that you want to buffer for the tanks and the Thors, because if the Hellbats are down, well, Lings just kind of clean everything else up. So the Bailings come crashing in once again. Control really not what Gumiho wants, is that we will see more tanks go down and more Lings, more Banes pop up. Of course, once the Cyclones go down, once the Thors go down, the, the Battle Cruisers are useless because this, the Corruptors will sit on top of them and force them to teleport away. So Ragnarok doing a great job of punishing the complexity of Gumiho's army, making it very hard for him to do what he wants. So we will see four Yamato there, the four dead Corruptors and Battle Cruisers. They run away, but there we go. The Vipers dropping the blinding clouds. The tanks can do absolutely nothing here. Corruptors in the sky, maybe giving a little bit more vision bias on the tanks from behind. And here you go. Battle Cruisers are going to get found out, but the Thor is doing decently defensively. And Ragnarok is just smashing this fight. Really, more. It's Gumiho is not taking the fight properly two or three times in a row now he's not had his stores where he needs to be to snipe down and not in high impact payload no they're in high impact payload mode i'm sorry i can't hear these things but he's not had his stores in position to snipe the vipers and in fairness to ragnarok part of that was good viper positioning uh he has not had his hellbats morph properly in fact so he, he was caught with his pants down caught from a morphing uh he, he moves his battle cruiser. Like, there are so many mistakes that Gumiho has made in this game. Now he's just absolutely getting punished for. The tank line will go down. Battle cruisers cannot teleport away anymore. One battle cruiser will fall, and nothing is going to stop these corruptors from killing the rest of them. There is one missile turret in the Cyclones, where well, they're busy dealing with the Roaches and the Ravagers chasing them down. So, the second battle cruiser is dead, and Gumiho, despite mining 3,000 minerals a minute, is broke as hell. He does not have much of anything here. Banley's come rolling into the natural tanks again, just chasing the Cyclones down. It seems like the last battle cruiser will, in fact, go down. Nothing saving it. Big deal, of course, or at least the one saving grace for Gumio. Is he's only lost 10 workers thus far, but I think we're going to see much more here. Gumio gets every single advantage in the early game that he could possibly find. 44 workers dead before 10 minutes. But Ragnarok takes all the fights that he needs, and Gumio massively messes those fights up. So now, Alpha X, 5-1. Pole position, first place in WTL after we force seven more weeks to play. Who does